So, that's the position of the government. What about Her Majesty's loyal opposition? The Labour Party want to remain members of the single market and the customs union during the Brexit transition period, which they say could last between two and four years. This would mean keeping free movement of people and accepting rulings by the European Court of Justice during this time. The party are a little less clear when it comes to their policy after the Brexit transition deal. They want a jobs first Brexit and they say they want tariff free trading relationships, but they haven't gone into specific detail of how their approach would differ from the government's. Well, in a speech yesterday, the Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn indicated what he thought a deal with Brussels should look like. To build a new high investment economy for the 21st century, we must get Brexit right. That means securing full access to the single market and using the powers we get back from Brussels to help transform our economy. The Tories are transparently failing in the Brexit negotiations. They're making a shocking mess of it. They're split down the middle, negotiating with each other instead of the European Union. With each passing day, they're driving us closer to a no-deal Brexit. Well, with me now is the Shadow Brexit Secretary, Keir Starmer. Thank Morning. you very much for coming in. Um, so we were talking with Robin Walker there about how we're going to break the deadlock that we find ourselves in yes. in these negotiations at the moment. What's Labour's idea? Well, we need to break the deadlock. Um, and we need to do it. Uh, the government needs to do a number of things. Uh, it needs to get rid of some of the red lines that are bedeviling the talks. The EU citizens are very close to agreement there. But this insistence that the European Court must have nothing to do with anything is making it difficult to make progress on that front. The government also needs to move from saying we will uh, honour our commitments on the finances to setting out the framework, not the sum. I also accept that the EU needs to move and be more flexible because um, I agree with David Davis when he says you can't simply separate out the issues we're dealing with now and the later issues and I think the, yeah, but those the are, difficult those issues are the of Northern That's Ireland. That's how the talks have been well, structured, that you deal with the divorce first and then you move well, on to I the mean, future David trading Davis, relationship. Course, David Davis uh, went to Brussels saying that he wasn't going to agree this sequencing, it was going to be the battle of the summer. Um, he then conceded before coffee time on day one and these are the consequences. But to be fair to him, he's right on issues like Northern Ireland, that there's only so far you can get uh, before you move to ah, the next and there's, phase. A, there's, a, there's a possibility that, that that may be dealt with later in the future, trading yes. relationships. But the real stumbling blocks are the divorce bill at the moment. Yes. Would Labour be prepared to offer more money than the UK government currently is to break this impasse? But the, 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 this, the, the deadlock last week was not about the sum of money. It was about the way you calculate it. Well, and it all comes down to the same thing in the end, because <laughs> the way you calculate it, it means how much of a bill but you get. You, you, you agree how you're going to calculate it. We haven't even reached... You negotiate that way of approaching it. Last week, I mean, the most disturbing thing that Michel Barnier said was that on the money, they're not even talking. And that's why I wrote to David Davis to say he should have an emergency round of talks this Monday to Wednesday before Thursday um, to try and close that gap because... Absolutely, and he wrote back to you and he said, if you're prepared to spell out exactly how much taxpayers' money you think we should offer the European Union in order to progress those talks, then he would sit but down and talk to you about it. David, so can you do that? Can David, you tell us how much taxpayers' money you would want to offer the EU? David Davis and I have had many exchanges about this. I have never once pressed him to put a sum of money on the divorce settlement. That is the wrong thing to do at this stage of negotiation, and I'm not going to do it the only way opposite. we're going to progress no, the negotiations. Not, the argument last week was not about the sum of money. We're not haggling over sums. It was about how do you move from the proposition that you'll honour your obligations to a framework within which you can actually see what that means. So That's do you where agree the with the government on what commitments should, what obligations they should be prepared well, of to Of course they should honour their international obligations for very obvious reasons. If but you there are many different ways of defining well, that. Are you and sure. David Davis on the same page about which commitments you would honour? I think he's right to say it should be as low a sum as possible. I think he's right uh, to move on to the, the principles. And he's right to say we'd, we'd honour our international obligations. We want a future relationship with the EU. We're not going to get so, one so if we walk away from this one without paying. So what you're saying is if you'd been in Brussels for all of these rounds of talks, if it had been you sitting across the table from Misha Barney, you would have been saying the same things as David Davis? On the divorce settlement, Which yes. is what they've been talking about. Uh, yeah, uh, so it makes no difference whether it was a Tory minister who was there or Keir Starmer who's been in Brussels no, this I, summer. I, I, I'm not sure where this mis misconfusion has got to here. I just said that what the government hasn't done is put on the table the framework 
uh, for sorting out what the liabilities are. We would do that. That's what the government hasn't done. I've also accepted that the EU needs to be more flexible about this. So I'm not saying the same approach. I've also said that there are fundamental red lines the Prime Minister laid down in her conference speech last year, which are bedeviling phase one and will bedevil every phase to follow. So you're laying down some amendments, the Labour yes. Party and other parties, to try and alter the withdrawal bill. And you want to give Parliament the right to veto the deal if it's a no deal or if you think it's a bad deal. Are you saying that if you don't like the shape of the deal at the end of all of this, that the Labour MPs would go in and defy the result of the referendum and vote against Brexit? Well, it wouldn't comments? be to defy the result of the referendum. Nothing on the, re on the ballot paper said anything about how you exit the EU or what the future well, it relationship said, it should be. It said that be. we would leave the EU. But Are you not... saying that you would vote against well, leaving the EU? Of course we would vote down a very bad deal for our country and it, you'd expect us to. I laid down six very strong red lines earlier this year saying that's exactly what we would do. We are not going to wade through whatever deal this government brings back. A no deal is very, very bad for our country. It's not just trade that it's bad for. If there's no deal, there is no agreement as to what will happen on the border in Northern Ireland. That means it's inevitable you will have a hard border. If there's no agreement, no deal, it means there's no deal on EU citizens in this country or UK citizens abroad. If there's no deal, it means that you haven't got an aviation settlement that allows planes to fly in the same way, something that Philip Hammond uh, set out quite yes. clearly to the uh, select committee but, this week. So, so but this just casual to be absolutely... talk of no deal, there's no way we would vote for no deal. That would be catastrophic. But just to be absolutely clear, you say you wouldn't vote for a bad deal either, and you've laid out your six yes. tests, and they include things like ensuring that we have the exact same benefits as we currently and have you will know as members of the single market and the customs and union. And you will know why I chose that test, because that is exactly what David Davis said from the dispatch box that he was going to deliver. So we've said, that's, that's what you've but said so you'll you, deliver, so, you, so, so we'll pin you to it. But I just want to be clear on this. You're saying unless the deal delivers the exact same benefits as membership of the um, single market and the customs union, the Labour Party will go into the House of Commons and vote against leaving the EU. That's our red line. It's been our red line for months on end. It is exactly what David Davis said he would deliver. He was pressed on this. He was pressed on it not once, but repeatedly. He said he will deliver exactly the same benefits as the single market and the customs union. So we've said, right, then you deliver that, and if you don't deliver that, we'll vote against it. That having but been that said... But that is not respecting the result of the referendum. If you go and into the House of Commons and vote to stay members of the European Union... I didn't see any question on the ballot paper that had anything to do with the single market or the customs union. There was a question Well, exactly. On the ballot That's paper. why it's difficult for you to make That's it a test and then say, if we don't no, no, get no, exactly what we want in our trading relationship, we'll vote to stay in the, the EU. But the benefits of the single market and the customs union, the benefits of trading in a huge, the biggest market in the world, without tariffs, without... Um, impediments. That is what everybody wants to achieve, including the Prime Minister. To say that's inconsistent with the referendum well, it, this, it, that, it, that it, was, would that be to... That was pretty extensively debated during the referendum and the British public voted to leave. You're but saying that you will vote in the Commons to stay well, in the EU if you don't get the exact deal you want. The, the, the both political parties, all political parties, recognise the benefits of the single market and the customs union. And nobody is suggesting that we should proceed with the future of this country in the next 40 or 50 years without those benefits. The question is how you achieve them, but to say that wanting to achieve them, that's a red line, is inconsistent with the referendum outcome, is to read into the referendum um, a prohibition on any meaningful relationship with the EU for the next half a century. Um, that is about as an extreme interpretation of the referendum as you could possibly come up with. You also uh, want an amendment to the withdrawal bill about the transition period, yes. writing into law what it would be. Would that include a time limit? I mean, we know that uh, some Tory cabinet ministers have been saying not a second more than two well, years. Some what's, one what, has. What's your view on the time limit? Should there be a time limit? Well, firstly, we need transitional measures. It is fantasy to suggest that we're going to get a, a full deal by March 2019. The sooner we have real politics instead of fantasy politics, the better. That transitional arrangement should be on the same basic terms as now, which is within the single market. It, uh, and within a customs union. And I've used this phrase, it should be as short as possible and as long as necessary. Now, I say that because it's temporary and businesses don't want uncertainty. Def so but this is my question. Well, Definitely uh, temporary. You wouldn't like to see it go on indefinitely, no, no, no. this transition it, 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 period. I, I wouldn't. It's a temporary arrangement. The reason I say as long as necessary is this. The final deal... I hope is something which will endure for decades, not five years or ten years, but possibly 30, 40 years or more. We have got to get that 
right, and we've got one shot at getting it right, and we should be more serious and grown up about how we're going to achieve it. Do you think there will be a deal that the Labour Party will be able to vote for in the House of Commons? Well, I have... As soon as the general election, the snap general election was over, I wrote to David David and said, why don't you now reset your objective so you can get consensus across the House for the approach, get a national uh, agreement about the approach. The government's refused to do that. I hope, I hope that they come back before March 2019 with a deal that includes transitional arrangements on the same terms as now, because that is desperately needed by our businesses uh, and across our communities. So I hope they come back uh, okay. with it. That will be positive. But the way that they're approaching it in such a chaotic, divided way, I, I doubt that they are capable of doing that. Well, Keir Starmer, thank you very much for talking thank to you. us this morning.